Welcome to Basketball U. If you're new to Basketball U, make sure you slam dunk that subscribe button. And just to make sure you don't miss a thing, make sure you tap that notification bell right after you hit that subscribe button. Basketball U, welcome back. It's good to be back in the presence of those who want to get better and learn. Be sure to hit that like button and let's keep this community of everyone who loves basketball rolling. As we have continued to break down positions, you have learned that there is more to playing the guard positions than just scoring and dribbling. The game is so much more mental than it is physically and really the mentality of this next position, you will need to carry a big bag of toughness with you as many people in this position are just that hard nosed and willing to get dirty for their team to get any type of advantage, especially on the defensive end. Today, we are going to be breaking down what is arguably the most important piece to a team's success in the game of basketball today. And this position was once called small forward, but mainly is known as the three and D guy. And the D stands for defensive. The five traits of a dominant small forward. Although every player wants to do a little bit of everything to help the team, especially as today's youth watch players like LeBron James, Kawhi Leonard, and Kevin Durant dominate the game. Not all players are suited to play the position successfully. So what characteristics can make for a dominant small forward? Number one, versatility. The most important trait that every great small forward must possess is the ability to do multiple things for the team. They're not the primary ball handler, but must still be a good dribbler. They're probably not the first option to post up within the offense, but most still are able to play with their back to the basket in the post. They may not be the leading scorer, but most still be able to shoot from the outside and create driving opportunities. Players who can only drive and are no threat to shoot or players who only stay outside to shoot threes are rarely considered great small forwards. Number two, athleticism. The small forward is stereotypically the most athletic player on the team which is why they are capable of doing so many things. Skills like speed, strength, agility, and quickness are useful at any position on the court, of course. But the player who possesses these skills at the highest level will typically make a great small forward. Number three, size and length. Of course, the most athletic player on the team may not always be the small forward, the ideal small forward couples the athleticism mentioned above with the length and size that allow them to be versatile. Typically, they will be taller and stronger than the point guard or shooting guard, but shorter and leaner than the power forward or center. Number four, instinct and basketball IQ. Because the small forward is expected to do a number of things for the team. One of the most important traits of the position is being able to anticipate which play to make and when. This may also be commonly referred to as basketball IQ. When is the right time to shoot the three pointer? When should he drive to the basket and score? When should he drive with the intention of creating opportunities for a teammate? Like any position on the court, instinct is the trait that commonly separates a good small forward from a dominant one. This is a difficult trait to teach, but we will talk more below about how players can work on improving their instinct. Number five, selflessness. The small forward is usually not the player with the ball in his hands the most, as the point guard is tasked with bringing the ball up the court and initiating the offense. However, they will still be expected to be able to handle the ball at a high level, both on the perimeter and while slicing into the lane. They are also unlikely to be isolated as a scorer in the post, but they will still be expected to play physical in the lane and to score with their back to the basket if the opportunity is there. Any player who is not the primary ball handler or scorer, but is still expected to do both of those things at a high level must be selfless in order to truly be great at the position. The roles and responsibilities of a three and defensive small forward. The small forward is expected to be versatile and to do a little bit of everything. But what does that mean exactly? Even though they can make plays in many different ways, it's equally important to realize that this does not mean having the ball at all times, taking all the shots, or forcing something to happen every time they get the ball. 
So what are the specific responsibilities of a great small forward? A. Driving the score. Perhaps more than any player on the court, the small forward is expected to be able to drive to the basket and score. Because no offense can thrive on just throwing the ball around the perimeter or only working through the post. Slashing into the lane and scoring at a high level is probably their most important responsibility. Especially at the youth level, driving to score is important because it may not be a strength of the other players. The smaller guards from the ones and the twos may not be strong enough to get into the lane or long enough to score if they get there. The larger and slower post players, the fours and the fives, may not be quick enough to create their own shot off the dribble. Attacking the rim and forcing the defense to collapse is important within just about any offense, and that often starts with the small forward. B. Driving to create for teammates. While dominant small forwards often drive with the intent of scoring with a strong finish at the rim, it is equally important that they can put their teammates in opportunities to score as well. Defenses will be prepared to help when that player drives to the lane, which will leave teammates open on the perimeter, and a great small forward is able to see the floor and distribute. It is great to have a small forward that is big, strong, and athletic enough to get into the lane and score. But if they are not also able to have vision of the court and pass the open teammates, eventually the defense will adjust to stop a one-dimensional player. C. Forcing the defense to extend to the perimeter. While a great small forward is dangerous when putting the ball on the floor and attacking the basket, that will eventually become easier to defend if they are not also able to knock down an outside shot. If they are only a threat to drive, the defense will collapse into the lane when they have the ball, limiting opportunities not only for themselves, but for the entire offense. Being a threat to make three-pointers limits which defenders can guard a small forward, it forces the defender to cover more space and it opens driving lanes for everybody else on the court. D. Handling the ball on the perimeter. Though the small forward is not the primary ball handler, they still primarily play on the wing and are considered a perimeter player. That means they are able to help the point guard and shooting guard handle the ball and find a good shot within the offense. In late game situations where ball control and limiting turnovers is most important, a dominant small forward is able to help the other two guards control the ball. Of course, being a strong ball handler will also help a small forward attack the basket as well. E. Defending the best athlete on the other team. While we have focused on offense to this point, we have established that the small forward is oftentimes the most athletic player on the team. Of course, this means they will oftentimes be responsible for guarding the most athletic player on the other team. In many cases, this may actually be the most important responsibility of the small forward. While other players may be able to handle the ball or make shots, they may not be physically capable of guarding the most athletic player on the other team. Again, this is a role of the small forward that requires selflessness as it is not easy to guard the other team's most athletic player in almost every game. F. Helping the front court players rebound. Even though the small forward is considered a perimeter player, they also have the responsibility to rebound along with the power forward and the center. Point guards and shooting guards may still be expected to rebound as well, but it is rarely a huge strength at these positions. Therefore, the small forward must also be able to rebound on both ends of the court. Otherwise, there would really only be two post players responsible for the boards. G. Game Film No one can know your game better than you. It is vital to watch highlights of yourself, especially because you have to be able to understand your strengths and weaknesses. With Game Film, you can see the game from a different perspective you're not used to seeing it from the same perspective everyone else sees. With film, you can find ways to exploit your opponent's techniques and schemes to put them at a disadvantage. From there, you'll notice a level of confidence come game day that you didn't have before. You'll feel more prepared for the game and that will allow your true skills to shine. In conclusion, this role has been around for some time now but it has become more defined because of the success of those players from the past 
who have basically won their team's championships with clutch shooting and the ability to take away the first or second option of scoring for the opposing team. This 3 and D position is more than just that, and it is a piece that helps the team create a winning environment and a winning culture. This is Basketball U. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And also, follow all of our social medias right there in the description to keep yourself up to date as this channel will have a lot of basketball, a lot of players, and a lot of training, and more information on how to play the game of basketball. Remember, someone's always working. Are you? 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 you.